What's up, everybody? It's Mr. Landing Wynn. We've been talking about markets. And in our market, I can buy whatever I want. I can sell whatever I want, right? We have a pure free market. Well, is that true? Well, you know that's not true. In our country, we have a modified version of a free market. In fact, to some degree, we have a mixed free market or a mixed market economy. And so what makes it modified or what makes it not purely free? Well, you know that the government acts as a regulatory body or acts as essentially a referee. And so by doing so, they set some rules, they set some regulations on what we can produce, how we produce it, and sometimes who gets the stuff. So today what we're gonna to be talking about is how the government plays a role in our economy and what role they play. And that's our learning target. We need to know the impact the government has when they play a role in our economy as a regulator, as a provider, et cetera. So let's get started today on a modified or a mixed market economy that we would find in the United States of America. Recall from an earlier video that a market consists of two major entities. You have a buyer and you have a seller. And a pure free market would operate this way without a government telling anybody what to buy or what to sell or essentially with little government interference. However, in the United States, we do not have a pure free market, as you know. So what's an example of a market or an industry that is impacted by government regulation? Well, let's take the market for guns. Now, whether or not we believe that a person should own guns in this country, we do have a second amendment which provides that opportunity. But not everybody can own a gun. And in some places, there are certain limitations on what type of guns you can own. Or maybe there's regulation on the amount of time that you have to wait until you possess a gun. The truth is the market for guns is regulated and heavily regulated in some areas of the country. So again, a pure free market would allow the buying and selling of guns purely without any interference by the government. But there is interference, there is regulation, there are rules. And so that's one example of when the government gets involved in regulatory processes. Now let's look at the economic freedom index that is provided by the Heritage Organization. And I want you guys to pay close attention to the top 10 countries or areas in the world that are considered the most free. Now note, first of all, that the United States does not even fall in this index. So where are we? And why aren't we in the top 10? Well, currently, based on this index, we are number 17. And so why is that? Or what is the reason behind that? Well, the, this index looks at particular things like economic freedom and regulation and the amount of government interference in business and property rights. And they amass or create an index number to identify the level of freedom. And so what we would consider the freest place in the world is actually not the freest in terms of economics. And so you can see that uh, Singapore currently is the most free. Hong Kong held that claim for many, many years until some of the recent events in 2019, 2020. So our country is not the most free. And why is that? What role does the government play in our economy, in our society? Well, let's take a look. All right, so our government plays several roles. Let's talk through each one of these roles. Number one, our government acts as a provider. What do they provide? Well, lots of things that you might have become accustomed to over the years, like a public education or police force, um, military, trash collection. There's a lot of examples of public sector, or you might even say public services that are provided for us as individuals. Another thing that the government does is they redistribute income. So they take from one group and redistribute that to another group. And there's lots of forms of this where you have these transfer payments, essentially, maybe in the form of social security or unemployment, welfare. These are different programs that will redistribute income. And the government is responsible for doing that. Another thing that the government is responsible for doing is to maintain private property rights. And this is important because if you think about one of the most important elements of being a citizen of the United States, it's the right to own both physical and intellectual property. 
And so our opportunity to own those things is what drives us many times to be motivated to actually create and produce. I know that if I create a business or I invent something that I can gain intellectual property, intellectual possession of those things, and no one else can infringe upon my invention or my written documentations and or my business. So government provides, redistributes income, protects our property, and then in some cases solves market failures. So a classic example of what we would call a negative externality, that is the impact of one group's decision on another group that had nothing to do with that actual decision is pollution. And so how do we solve that problem in the market? It's easiest for a factory just to go dump their chemicals into the local river, but that's not the best thing for our ecosystem or our people. And so how do we solve that problem? Well, the government steps in and they make the decision to regulate that industry. So the government acts as both a regulator and a deregulator of the economy. Regulation is when the government imposes rules and deregulation is when the government reduces rules. So these are the two operations that the government's involved with. And based on who's in power at any time, we might see more or less of this occur. So an example of regulation would be the fact that the government might require an industry to accommodate something that they believe is in the best interest of all people. And deregulation would be when they take their hand off a market and allow for production where they believe it's in the best interest of all people. So regulation and deregulation are important when you speak to the role of government in society. Now, what do we call it when the government plays the ultimate role in society or in the economy and acts as an authoritative totalitarian regime? Well, this is known as a command economy. A command economy is one where the government basically directs the economy. And so we have several examples of command economies that we could point to in the last 50 to 100 years. You have the Soviet Union, which no longer exists, but did represent that. You have Cuba, up until maybe eight years ago, started to privatize a little bit, basically in the model of China. You have current you know, North Korea in 2020, which probably is the best example of a totalitarian authoritarian regime. But these countries have taken the pendulum and swung it to the furthest element of government control or government impact in the society. And so this is known as a command economy. Again, a command economy is when a central organization regulates completely and controls the economy in a totalitarian manner. And this is to institute the control placed forth by the central government. So today we talked a little bit about how government plays a role in the economy in the United States and also what the extreme version of that is. But our country fundamentally, the United States, is a market-based economy. However, principally, we are a mixed economy because we do have a government that makes rules. So today's learning target was to take a look at how the U.S. government plays a role in the economy. And we know they play a, a regulatory role, sometimes a deregulatory role. But our learning target was to focus on the different characteristics of how they did that. So how do they do it? Well, they act as a a regulator, of course, as a redistributor of income, a protector of property rights as a provider. And these are the ways that the government acts as this entity in our economy. So the main focus of this particular part of the class was to look at economic systems. And there are various economic systems, as we've talked about before. We have market, mixed, command, and traditional. And all those have different characteristics. This is Mr. Landingwin. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and look forward to seeing you next time.